Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we're going to continue with our nerd math series, and we're going to focus on our first goal for Turkish get-ups. There are many goals you can set for Turkish get-ups. Turkish get-ups are a hard activity. They have their own separate math from everything else involved. Because Turkish get-ups take a long time. One rep really fast of a Turkish getup is 15 seconds. That means you're probably using a lightweight and you're moving pretty quickly. Kind of a normal pace is about 30 seconds per rep for an intermediate weight. That can get way longer if you're using a really, really, really heavy weight. We're assuming that we're using kind of intermediate weights for this concept. Our first goal is usually just 10 minutes of Turkish getups. It used to be five minutes of Turkish get-ups, but we kind of balanced it out with our swings. And now I say just 10 minutes of Turkish get-ups. The hard part about Turkish get-ups is you actually have to learn to do them first. So there usually is a lot of training before we even get to goal one, where we break it down, we explain it, we figure out where your hand position is. We have a whole series of videos on Turkish get-up breakdowns for that exact purpose. So you can figure out how to do a Turkish get-up. When we start stringing them together, I like to do it a very specific way. I like to do it as time under tension. And we run through three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes to get to our goal of 10 minutes. There can be intermediate steps in there. Three minutes and 30 seconds, four minutes and 30 seconds, five minutes and 30 seconds. If you put in the intermediate steps, think of that as week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, week six, week seven, week eight. Usually I go faster than that and I do week one, week two, week three, week four. If we add one minute each workout, if a rep takes 30 seconds each side, we're adding only one rep each side. If you're moving faster than that or using a lighter weight, then we put in our intermediate steps. This is all dependent on the coach or how you feel you're doing. Side note, if you're adding your intermediate steps, we always wanna make sure we're starting with the off hand, your non-dominant hand, because if you end up doing an odd number, say five reps on the left and four reps on the right, you want the greater of number of reps to be on your weaker side, your non-dominant side, so that it gets more work than your strong side. We all know your strong side can do it. You don't have to prove it, and that's not really good training. The goal is to get this one to be as strong as this one. We tend to be doing, when we're doing Turkish get-ups, sets of one because each rep takes a long time. You can get a lot of snatches in 30 seconds, it, probably at least 10. With Turkish get-ups, you're probably getting one if you're stopping and you're doing proper fixation along the way. That means that you're stopping and you're making sure everything's in place. That is a good way to keep from getting hurt to make sure everything is in place every time. Because Turkish get-ups are a fairly complicated activity, we want to do them slow instead of fast so that we cannot kill ourselves. You tend to drop weights on your head if you move fast. If you bend your elbow or your wrist compromises, then you tend to get collapsed. All Turkish get-up instructors are taught about this. It's in the massive part of becoming a kettlebell instructor is figuring out how to coach this and to spot this exercise safely. So think about this as becoming a time under tension activity, but not really in the same way because you're alternating hands. Your shoulder and your arm, the weak link in the entire situation, is resting as you change from side to side. I prefer to do reverse Turkish get up so I can do a clean and press transition in the middle and we can keep the kettlebell off the ground the entire time. The original way the Turkish get up is taught is from the ground with the rollover. We have videos on that, go back and watch them. The goal is to keep the kettlebell up the entire time. That's where we're getting our time under tension. This is why Turkish get ups end up being a super badass exercise for almost everybody. It goes through tons of planes of motion. It has a lunge, it has a clean, it has a press, it has a floor press, it has a get up, it has a hip pass through. If you can do all of those things with a weight for 10 minutes, it tends to have a very good athletic effect for most people who aren't just brilliantly trained, super badass gymnast athletes or professional dancers. Even they will benefit from it. The point of the Turkish getup is you are forced into proper biomechanical lineup for a very basic human thing, getting up off the ground. It's not often covered in a lot of things. It's covered a lot in martial arts and dance, but not usually with weight. Although you do see male dancers lifting women from the ground as fundamental part of their training quite a bit. But you know, how many people are well-trained dancers in the modern world? Not a lot. That's why we want to do this. We want to get that 
time under tension with our arms alternating rest, but the rest of our body does not come out of load. You're keeping your abs on, you're keeping your legs on, you're keeping everything on, your crown and coccyx alignment, your leg drive, your hip snap, all for a specific set of time in a small space with a small amount of equipment. That's why Turkish get-ups are really, really, really good to teach almost everybody, including professional athletes. People benefit from this massively. There are many ways to do Turkish get-ups, and we're going to talk about a lot of them moving forward in the future. The time under tension is usually just goal one. You can get much more elaborate in this series and do different types of Turkish get-ups, judo get-ups, the no support hand get-ups. There's a lot of variations on this and they're all really good for you because getting up off the ground is fundamental to humans and it's oftentimes overlooked massively in training. If you get good at this, you tend to get good at a lot of other stuff on accident. That's what we call the what the hell effect in kettlebells. Good alignment for time under tension. This has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica.